guys out here doing my trees off my power line because it was such a mess and they worked so hard. I really, really, really appreciate them and they did a hard job. So tell them I called and said thank you very, 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 very much. It's hard to see all these trees down around people's houses and you know, them without power for weeks. It's been a week and a half into the storm now. People have been very gracious to us. Even when we were up in North Carolina on our way down after the, the day after the storm left, there's people waving American flags out the window and people stopping gas stations. They're all headed back down to check on what happened to their houses. Um, that's when I really started to sink in what we were about to get into. A lot of the people won't have power and somebody will come in and they may work an extra hour to get somebody back on. And so you'll get a call from them and they're just you know so grateful. As we all know, natural disasters can either be expected or avoided. And in areas where hurricanes are a possibility, the only thing to do is prepare for the worst and hope for the best, because things can change and change quickly. Hurricane Harvey in Texas was a storm which left unimaginable damage due to unrelenting rain and the floods which followed. Hurricane Irma here in Florida was a bit different. We weren't sure at first of which side of the state it was coming up. It at first appeared to be the east side, and so we all prep for that and uh, came in the west coast and uh, really changed changed the uh, the aspect of what we were going to do and how our plan was moving forward so in turn what that did was is, is uh, really shake things up and nobody really had a plan this is the worst that that i've seen as far as it hit the whole state irma hit the whole state at its peak she was 420 miles wide she knocked out power to an estimated 6.8 million people and caused more than $100 billion of damage. But the Powering America team of NECA and the IBEW, when the skies cleared, were ready to work. The recovery effort took place in three phases, really. First and foremost was transmission and distribution. Between what we had already working in the state and what we brought in, somewhere a little over 600 and 20 or 30 people. And this storm right here with the crew that I have, we've actually lived through the storm ourselves. My family was without power and all their families were too. And they still came in to go to work, you know, for everybody else. The way we had set it up is to work 16 hours a day. Well, 16 hour days minimum. You know, you try to get the guys eight hours rest each night. Hopefully at 16 hours, if everything was good, then they would go and get rest. Uh, but, you know, if they were out there and, and there was something that was really urgent that they could get done in another hour or so, we left it up to the crews. Once power was available, the focus then shifted from large commercial projects like this one in Miami, where Tri-City Electric and its team of IBEW craftsmen and women worked at the Hollywood Casino without electricity for days to get things back up and running, to the littlest of jobs, like this boat dock in Daytona. But no matter the type of work, these men and women have a deep connection to the trade and an understanding of the power of power. On a normal job, we, we set a pole with six to seven guys, and generally it's a four or five hour process in this situation here with Storm. We usually have eight to 10 guys because we try to do it quickly. We're doing whatever we can today to get them back with power and air conditioning. It's hot down here. It's, it's, hard, it's hard enough just to get through the day work and knowing you're going back to the hotel, but for them to just be in it day in and day out for a couple of weeks, it's, it's pretty tough. If you notice the guys that are working there, you know, we've all got on FR clothing, flame resistant clothing. You know, you, the guys up there that are doing distribution work, they're wearing uh, rubber gloves and sleeves and it, it gets pretty hot. We've been blessed. We've got a lot of great guys that, that work for Service Electric. Everybody goes out of their way. I mean, you know, they, a lot of people have been through these hurricanes and stuff before and so you're very, sympathetic to the folks that are out there that are out of power. I like climb work because it gives good opportunity to me and my family. It's an opportunity to meet new people and, and, and uh, meet a great group of guys. I think this was a wise decision. I think the trades are a good option for a lot of people. You feel compelled to try to get the electrical back on as, as quick as you possibly can. It all trickles down from the linemen all the way down to us doing what needs to be done. Everybody has their thing and this is what we do. There's a lot of pride coming out here. You got families suffering, their 
you got babies without power, you know, sitting in this heat. So it is, you know, you feel like you're actually doing a community service to get these people back in power again. Somebody asked me the other day about heroes. I said, the heroes are these folks that are out here working in this field every day, you know, through the heat, through the mud, through the water, and, and, and everything that goes with it. We are the Powering America team, the other first responders. For Electric TV in Florida, I'm Dominic Giratano. Be sure to follow us on social media for behind the scenes extras and industry information.